I just saw gravity. <laughs> it's fucking amazing. Okay, first of all, this has spoilers, so if you haven't seen it yet, stop. Whatever you're doing, don't be an idiot. I'm gonna tell you stuff that happens in the movie, so don't just stop. I saw this yesterday, I saw it at IMAX, and it is incredible. If you're gonna see it, please go see it in IMAX 3D. It is just a game changer. The director, Alfonso Curiuk, I don't, I don't know how to say it. Anyway, he said that if you see this in 2D, you're only seeing 30% of the film. Why? Because this film is the best way that you are going to experience seeing space. I hate those idiots who say you feel like you were there, but in this case, it's while still munching popcorn, you feel like you're part of the action. It's immersive, things are moving around, there's some first person perspective where you're in the spacesuit. It's just fun. It's, fun. it's awesome. Now, I, I, I love space. I love space. So I was super excited to go see this. Had the whole day planned. Went out, got my tickets, pre-ordered everything, sat down, and was strapped in, ready to go. I left the cinema after this movie a little like Avatar. It's the same sort of thing. Visuals and the world that it takes you into is so amazing and so game-changing for cinema. But the story sucks balls. Avatar was basically The Last Samurai or Dances with Wolves Part 2 on another planet. Gravity doesn't even have that. There's no character development or story or character plot or arcs. There's nothing, nothing, none of that. You literally start in space, you don't meet anyone, and a few seconds in, one of the people who you're supposed to care about, apparently, because he's funny, is dead. But anyway, the science of gravity. Okay. First things first, there are no American launch vehicles anymore, okay? There's no rockets leaving from the United States going into space with people on them anymore. How do Americans get to space? They hitch a ride with the Russians. Since 2011, there are no more space shuttles. So the shuttle we saw in the movie was Explorer? There was a whole fleet of space shuttles. Enterprise, Columbia, Challenger, Discoverer, Atlantis and Endeavour. Another thing was the Chinese space station. At the moment, it only has two modules. They showed it in its complete form as what it will look like in 2016. The fetal position. There's a scene where Sandra Bullock gets into the module and she takes off her stuff and she's got a little tight booty thing going on there and a little crop top. That's nonsense. Now I get the whole symbolism thing like she's in the womb and safety and the umbilical cord and the thing. But an astronaut that's been outside the spaceship, what they called an extravehicular activity, you would have a, a suit on. Firstly, you'd have a diaper on. Secondly, you'd have this liquid cooled suit on. It's just basically all these tubes and stuff like that. So her just taking that off and just having nothing on is ridiculous. Another big one for me was the whole, the thing where she's holding him and they have to like, and he has to let go and she has to, they have to, the whole thing. That's not how the rest of the movie works, gravity works, gravity in the movie works, or gravity in any other part or any other scene works. So her legs are tangled up in the thing, and she's holding on to him, and he says, I'm pulling you off, I need to let go. And so, but they're holding on, all she had to do was just, just, just a tug, just that, just that, that's all. And he would have started floating towards her. Astronaut Kathy Coleman actually said that she used to pull out hairs and place them in her finger, the other end touching the wall, and she used to push herself through the International Space Station with just the pressure that she would apply on her own hair. That's how little force it takes to start moving. Anyway, they had to get rid of George Clooney, his chin was in the way, whatever. Another cool scene is George Clooney in the little jetpack when he goes around at the start of the movie. If you notice, that's one single shot, which is really cool to watch. But anyway, he's moving around in his little jetpack. It's called an MMU, a Manned Maneuvering Unit. They're an actual real thing, but they don't use them anymore. They stopped using them in the 90s. The other part of that is he wasn't tethered at all. He was just sort of jetting around. That wouldn't happen. Now, the whole premise of the movie is that Russia fires up a missile and explodes one of their satellites. 
This actually happens. The US does it, China do it. Uh, some satellites might be old, redundant, they want to get rid of them. No point going up there, they just shoot them. Now this does two things. This gets rid of the satellite, and it also says to all the other countries that we have missiles that can take out little tiny things in the sky. So, just, uh, just, uh, you know that, just to show, just so you know that, that we can do that, in case you were thinking of doing a thing over there, we got... So basically, Russia, China, and America, they all do that, just to show how big their dicks are compared to each other's. Anyway, so, shoot the satellite, breaks up, it goes flying towards where they are servicing Hubble, which is a telescope, which I actually talk about in this video here. And it takes them out. Explosion, it looks awesome, holy shit, the 3D in this scene, and these other scenes where it's just exploding in space, is incredible and worth the price of admission itself. The thing about that is, Russian satellites tend to orbit the Earth, so most of the time they're spent over Russia. Same goes for China, same goes for the US. What do I mean? So Hubble orbits at 28.5 degrees from the equator. What does that mean? I mean it orbits on this line around the planet. So shooting a Russian satellite wouldn't really affect where they were. Sure, it may cross over at some point, but not every hour and a half. So there's a scene where they escape from their shuttle and the Hubble and just sort of go over there to where the ISS is. That, you, that's not possible. It turns out it would take less energy to launch a rocket from the ground up to where they were to get them than for them to use the fuel on the shuttle to go over to the ISS. First of all, the ISS is orbits around the Earth at about 400 kilometers. The Hubble Space Telescope, where they were, is about 560 kilometers. Secondly, like we said before, the angle that they go around the Earth is completely different. It would take such an enormous amount of energy to go from where they were to the ISS in the movie. But, it looks fucking awesome. Okay, so there's other things I could talk about, like the hole in the window blowing out when she comes in, the fact that the shuttle she was in was in Chinese and Russian, all you have to do is open a booklet. The fact that she was up there in the first place with only six months training. The fact that she landed in the water and if you'd played Far Cry 3, you were probably waiting for a crocodile to eat her. Symbolism in the movie, the fact that there's no story. But apart from that, if there is a movie that looks this awesome and gets people excited about science and excited about space, I'm all for it. Science in the movie is a little off, but I don't care. The artistic license they take is totally cool because the movie we get and the way that you feel like you're doing some of this stuff and you're right there is so damn cool. Go see this movie. Go check it out. Maybe there's some other things in the movie that you can tell me about that I didn't even notice. But this is definitely something you have to see in the cinema. You have to see in 3D. And you have to, if you can, go see it at IMAX. Thanks for watching, guys. See you soon.